In this difficult environment, what do we do with a winter apparel company like Columbia Sportswear? I just recommended this stock aggressively less than three weeks ago in the wake of winter storm Jonas, because I thought that after months of being beaten down by unseasonably warm weather, this company could really benefit from a multi-state blizzard. But the story turns out to be much more than just about the weather. Columbia Sportswear is a well-run house of brands, including Montreal, Mountain Hardware, Prana, Sustainable Yoga, and Climbing Apparel, Sorel Boots, along with the namesake Columbia brand. And the company has a long history of outperforming the competitors. Now, Columbia just reported after the close today, and the, it was terrific. As a 14-cent earnings beat off a 76 basis, higher than expected sales, increased by 3% year-over-year on a 7 uh, or a se- uh, on a 7% constant currency basis. They do have a lot of foreign sales. Plus, management gave pretty darn solid guidance for 2016. So let's dig deeper with Tim Boyle as the CEO of Columbia Sportswear, hear more about the quarter and what's next for his company. Mr. Boyle, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be here. I appreciate you inviting me. All right, Tim, this was the quarter, I think, where we now realize that Columbia Sportswear is a technology company and has brands that touch secular growth areas like yoga. And the idea that if it's not cold, you can't make your numbers is a thing of the past. Well, listen, it's always great for us uh, when, when the weather's cold, but frankly, we've really focused diligently on making the business better and less weather dependent. You know, uh, north of 30% of our sales are outside the U.S., so the chances of it being the proper temperature all over the world is just remote. So we have to have business that, that can sustain uh, our growth on a less weather dependent uh, time of the year. Now, some of these, the prawn acquisition is looking brilliant. I mean, the growth there is extraordinary. Is that something that can be sustainable? Yeah, we think so for sure. It's um, you know, it's a relatively small company. It's a small part of our business. Very well run. We're thrilled with the business, especially the fact that uh, it's less weather sensitive. It's about 50% fall, 50% spring. But most importantly, it's about 70% women. And as you know, women are buying apparel much more uh, heavily than than men and uh, that's that's really an area where we, we've been focusing is on making our products and our brands more relevant to women now is rock climbing yoga i mean these are things that uh a few years ago i would say well maybe lululemon's got it but this is a much bigger category than we realize i guess well, I think it's it's really uh, how that product, which is based on those kinds of activities, can extend beyond just those limited activities. So these products are, are made for people who are active, who enjoy being outside, being passionate about what they do, whether they're climbing or whether they're doing yoga or whether they're just enjoying the outdoors. These products are designed to be comfortable. And with that basis, it really allows us to be differentiated from every other company in the, in the United States or the world, for that matter, that's selling apparel. Right. And, and really, the opportunity with Prana for growth is going to be outside the U.S. as well. Okay, Sorrel. I mean, my wife loves her Sorrel. Everybody here, actually, two, three people on our staff have them. 14% growth. Uh, even though a lot of this is associated in our country, you, you know, if your feet are cold, it hasn't been that cold. There's something else going on here with this brand, isn't there? Well, there is, and it's it's really an, an extension of the product into apparel, which is small and was really a, a microcosm capsule collection we put together this year. But really, the brand has so much strength outside of just winter. But, you know, again, as we talk about how to differentiate these brands from others, we have to have some basis in, upon which to, to rely to rely our design uh, efforts and, and, and focus those. And really for us, it's about protection, whether it's protection from rain or snow or cold or just making a good pair of uh, boots for, for great weather. Now, you have also uh, showed us time and again that there's a lot more uh, technology in your clothes than almost anybody. We hear about wearables and things like that, but you continue to improve it, make it so it's uh, tougher when it's colder, better. Is that continuing, the, the technology in your, in your materials? Well- Exactly. And, and that's, again, talking about points of differentiation from us from every other brand that sells apparel. We're really about making uh, people be comfortable so they can stay outdoors longer. It's one of the reasons, frankly, the, the Manchester United uh, team has approached us because not only do our, our products very different from other products that they would sell in their fan shops, but it's also the global nature of the Manchester United team as well as our own distribution. So. We can keep people comfortable globally and uh, and really be different that way. 
Uh, last question. You got the, you mentioned the great balance sheet. You alluded to it. You say, listen, we can do this great balance sheet. To me, that meant you're either going to continue to buy back stock a lot or you have your eye on some other smaller brands that can be put within your family. Or can you do both? Well, you know, I think at the end of the day, we're obligated to manage all of our assets, including our cash, in the best way. However, we really believe the, the best, most, least risky way for us to grow our business and to expand our operating margins is to concentrate on those brands that we already have. That having been said, we've been successful, we've managed our balance sheet carefully, and we have the opportunity to acquire brands should they become available. But frankly, the focus is on making our existing brands better and bigger. Well, look, congratulations. It was a quarter I know that we were thinking you're going to deliver because we recognize the transition that you put into place. Tim Boyle, CEO of Columbia Sports. We're great to see you, sir. Thanks, Jim. But stocks are very big. You know, it's always better to buy it when it's cheap than when it's rolling. But what a transformation of a great American company. Tim Boyle, CEO of Columbia Sports. We're stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.